Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, more beer for us. Remain Stavern delivered. He is now one of the title holders in the heavyweight division. He did so by six-round KO over Chris Ariola. Now, let me say this. Hindsight is 100%. It's really unfair for me, you, or anyone else to look at a film of a fight and then to point out what a fighter did wrong and how that fighter could have increased his chances of winning the fight. But at the same time, hindsight provides clarity. I want people to interpret these comments not as an indictment of Chris Ariola. Rather, I want people to view these comments as really pointing out some things that we all should look for in handicapping future fights. Understand, our goal here, this is really for gamblers. This is the roll of the dice part of the internet. Our goal here is really to beat the casino. Right? So, what I want people to do is to look at the fight. I have a link to the fight on my YouTube channel page right now. Look at the fight and just filter your view through some of the points I'm making here. Right? You can agree with them, you can disagree with them, but look at the video and see if what I'm saying makes sense. Now let's say you are a heavyweight boxer. And let's say you have the foot speed advantage. And you have the hand speed advantage on your opponent who, let's be real here, has the boxing advantage on you. In other words, if the two of you are in a phone booth and you're both playing checks, Right? You're both figuring out angles and strategy and what to do. The other guy's actually better at it than you. The other guy can fight on his back foot. The other guy hits harder than you do. The other guy throws punches, particularly his jab, from different angles. He can hide his hands. The other guy rolls a little bit better with punches than you do. Right? The other guy can diffuse your right hand by simply putting up his left hand. Which, by the way, Stavern does just moments before the first knockdown in the fight. So let's say you're Chris Ariola, right? Apart from the foot speed advantage, apart from the hand speed advantage, apart from your ability to generate higher volume, you understand that if you actually sit down and try to exchange with your opponent, your opponent might actually have the advantage. So how should you fight him? Let me throw in the fact that you realize that you don't move your head that much. Right? In other words, when the bullets start flying, you're someone who isn't defensive by nature. You're offensive. You're more of a lead puncher than a counter puncher. And when you start throwing a two-handed attack, your head stays still. Right? Let's assume, by the way, that these fighters have a full understanding of how they come across on film. Right? I'm guessing Chris Ariola knows that he doesn't move his head that much. As you watch the telecast, you'll hear Teddy Atlas early on point out that everyone knows Chris Ariola doesn't move his head that much. So, let me get rid of this phone call. Let's say that you're Chris Ariola. How should you fight this fight? Let me make a couple of points. The first point is by not boxing your opponent. You don't want to play chess. You don't want to be in front of an opponent who has more boxing skills than you. Rather, you want to 
shoot a jab and fight this fight like Roy Jones used to fight fights. Right? The bottom line is Ariola here, in my opinion, should have been doubling, tripling up on the jab. He should have stayed outside. Why come inside? Ever. Right? He should have stayed outside. He should have given the illusion of boxing. I don't believe the crowd would know the difference. I believe if he were to faint, 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 shoot a jab, shoot a jab, shoot a jab, if there's a big opening, throw a big punch. Come in with some lead right hand bombs every now and then, right? But really rely on a jab and movement. Have a cushion between himself and his opponent, right? That he himself didn't breach, right? Force his opponent to literally come forward and to use his foot speed. I believe he would have been much better off. Let me make another point, hopefully as soon as this phone dies down. If Ariola in a round wins the first two minutes and 45 seconds of the round, what I believe Ariola should do at that point Right? Because the point here is to win rounds, right? Your, your goal in fighting is to win the fight. If you're on your way to winning the round, right? If you've done more than the other guy, why would you be in his area code the last 15 seconds of the round? Right? Why not back away? Again, shoot a jab. Jabs create distance right your goal here is to be away from the guy to highlight the fact that you have the foot speed advantage you have the hand speed advantage right your goal is to play to your strengths right so if you've won the first two minutes and 45 seconds of the round what are you doing right in front of the guy trading punches over the last 15 seconds why would you do that the other guy has to come to you to make the fight, right? You should be able to be outside shooting a jab. Your jab should be like a metrodome, right? The point is, you should be building up rounds. You should be showcasing your talents. Now let's talk about what happened in the fight. Because I didn't think Chris Ariola did that. In fact, let me get deep for a moment. I didn't think Chris Ariola was going to do that. Because quite frankly, Ariola is more of a fighter than a boxer. He's not a strategist. Right? He's the fastball pitcher who, when you're at the plate, even though you can't hit a curveball, He's still trying to bring what he thinks he does best, which is his fastball. Folks, at the upper level of the sport, I believe fighters have to adapt. I believe you have to plan fights based on who your opponent is. If your opponent doesn't have great foot speed, if he doesn't have the athleticism to follow you around the ring, like let's say Vladimir Klitschko, if he's not a great athlete, with a lot of ring coverage, right? If he's more of a slugger with boxing skills who excels up close but not from distance, then what are you doing fighting him up close? So, the first round. I was prepared to give that round to Chris Ariola. Then, curiously, 15 seconds are left in the round. Where's Ariola? Exactly where he shouldn't be. Right in front of Bermain Stavern. Stavern then gets off the best combination of the round. Right? Throws two hard punches. The second punch, a right hand, hits Ariola flush. 
So I'm looking at the round. At the end of the round, I thought, who would I rather be at this point? Ariola or Bermain Stavert? I gave the first round to Bermain Stavert. Right? I couldn't believe Ariola was even close to Stavern at the end of the round. Then we get to the second round. Guess what? Ariola's winning the second round on my scorecard. Right? I'm about to write in Ariola's name as winning the second round. Then, of course, we get to the end of the second round. Ariola's getting backed up by Stavern. Right? <laughs> I gave the second round to Ariola, but let's just say, you know, after you win the first two minutes and 45 seconds of a round, shouldn't the end of the round be your victory lap? Right? Why, why wasn't Ariola showboating a little bit, fainting a little bit from the outside, staying outside? Instead, it looked like Stavern was trying to walk him down. We get to the third round, right? Now, the third round's interesting. I gave the third round to Ariola. In other words, in the normal course of things, when Ariola is fighting from the outside and coming in, right, Ariola naturally has more volume than Bermain Stavern. But understand, Stavern is a chess player. The game is different for him. He's not trying to fight fire with fire. He's the opposite of Chris Ariola. Right? He has a strategy. In the third round, he starts hitting Chris Ariola with body shots. Right? He's not interested in looking good. He's interested in actually depleting his opponent strategically. Now, it's troublesome, of course, because Chris Ariola is in front of him to get hit with body shots. Let's just say this, too. In terms of hand speed, no one's going to confuse Bermains to Burn with Manny Pacquiao or Gary Russell. Right? But yet, Stavern is able to land body shots. Then we get to round four. Now, I'm just telling you my scorecard. I thought round four was close. But, of course, Stavern starts landing his jab with regularity. Now, I know traditionalists want you to shoot a jab from up top, right? I understand that. Petty Atlas, during the telecast, says, hey, Stavern's jab, he's throwing it from his waist. It's causing a delay between when he starts to throw it and when it lands on Ariola. But understand, Ariola is not keeping him busy. Ariola is not throwing enough of his own jabs. Understand too, throwing the jab from your waist hides your jab. Someone looking at you who knows you're a headhunter, right? Looking at you up top, especially if you have your right hand cocked right and you have a dangerous right hand someone looking up top at that right hand and you looking at your eyes might not see the jab you're throwing from below the screen right this is a trick I noticed people like Lennox Lewis used to use Adonis Stevenson throws jabs from his waist remains to burn throws jabs from his waist the interesting thing with Stavern, why he's a more advanced fighter, chess player, right, up close, than Chris Ariola, is remains Stavern at times has his hands up and shoots a jab from up here. But then at other times, he's throwing the jab from down here. In round four, that jab bothered Chris Ariola, according to my notes. Now, Ariola finishes the round strong. Right? Ariola has a habit. Perhaps he's watched too many Ray Leonard films, but he has a habit of trying to flurry at the end of rounds. Right? But I gave round four to Bermain Stavern. We get to round five. The round is close. 
But again, Ariola, in my opinion, looks like the better athlete. Right? I gave round five to Chris Ariola, but significantly, Teddy Atlas, watching the fight, you know, from ringside, said that he thought Ariola was getting a little bit tired. Right? That's because, again, Ariola is fighting too much. Right? The beauty of fighting like Roy Jones is that you can fight better boxers, better technicians, like James Tony, like Bernard Hopkins. And literally, because you're not in front of James Tony or Bernard Hopkins trying to deconstruct them, because you're actually on your horse using your legs and showmanship, just coming in, throwing jabs and backing away, and because they can't catch up with you, right? And because you're directing the crowd's attention to the foot speed gap, right? Because we all remember Roy Jones outside on James T Tony. He's fainting. He's fainting. He's acting like he's a rooster. Then hitting Tony, right? Then backing back out. Because those are the parts of the fight. It's a full ring game. We remember. Then that showmanship can carry you on the judges' scorecards. Just like it carried Roy Jones against Tony and Hopkins. But here, Chris Ariola isn't taking breathers outside. He's not using showmanship from the outside. He's actually inside, in too close. So close, he's getting hit with body shots. He's actually trying to box the technician. This would be like fighting James Tony and trying to be up close on James Tony. That's not the way you beat him. The way you beat him is by highlighting your superior foot speed. It's by moving around. Right? Again, giving the illusion of boxing in. Throwing a lot of jabs. Highlighting your hand speed advantage. Moving around the ring. Highlighting your foot speed advantage. Taking breathers. Being episodic. Planning ambushes at times. So now we get to round six. Let me tell you, round six has a real good sequence. It's right before the first knockdown. Remains to Vern is backing up. Think about it. He's the big puncher in this fight, right? He has the biggest punch. He broke Ariola's nose the first fight. He dropped Ariola in the third round the first fight. He has the big punch. Now, where is Chris Ariola? And keep in mind, on my scorecard, Ariola's up 3-2. I gave him the second, third, and fifth rounds. So where is Chris Ariola in the sixth round as he fights Bermains to Vern? He's right in front of him. He's trying to hunt down a puncher. Gives away his foot speed advantage. Right? Bermain Stavern doesn't have to try to catch up to Ariola's foot speed because Ariola's right in front of him. So Bermain Stavern, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Bermain Stavern is backing up. He's shooting a jab. At one point, and I thought it was an interesting moment, Ariola's so aggressive that Stavern. Just sticks his hand out. Doesn't even throw the jab. This is moments before the knockdown. Uh, sticks his hand out to tie up Ariola's right hand. Right? Stavern literally is dictating the timing. Right? Sticks his hand up. Is looking at Chris Ariola. These two guys are fighting a different game. Right? Stavern is technical. He's planning what he's going to do. A few seconds later, he shoots the left jab. 
He ties up with that jab. Chris Ariola. Ariola is moving toward trying to deal with Stavern's jab. When Stavern comes across with the right hand, that drops Ariola. Right now, to the Ariola people, let me ask the obvious question. What's Ariola doing right in front of Bermain Stavern? He still has the foot speed advantage. He still has the hand speed advantage in the sixth round. Why is he bringing the fight to Bermain Stavern? As I said in the pre-fight video, who tries to bring the fight to George Foreman? Right? You don't do that. That's not how it's done. So, of course, Ariola gets hit with the right hand. The fight's effectively over because he goes down hard, right? Even with a slight delay in the fight after that, he goes down a second time. Whenever you see a fighter go down and he's face first and caught up on the ropes like Ariola goes down the second time you know the fight's over when Ariola gets up he clearly doesn't have his legs the referee doesn't ask Ariola to take a couple of steps toward him let me openly question whether Ariola could have done even that right the ref instead lets them continue fighting and it's clear Ariola is too disoriented to continue. I, for one, seeing how hard Bermain Stavern throws that right hand, was grateful that they stopped the fight. I thought Ariola could have been seriously hurt. Right? Ariola is too front foot heavy. There's a great moment in the fight. It's an inflection point. It's in the fifth round. Ariola is in the middle of the ring. He pauses for a second. Where's Bermain Stavern? Where would you expect him to be? He's over by the side of the ring. You understand that Stavern wants Ariola to come over to him. Ariola pauses for a second. I believe Ray Leonard, a Roy Jones, a Floyd Mayweather, I believe those guys would have understood that at that moment they hold all the cards. Right, Chris Ariola at that point could have motion to Bermain Stavern. I'm over here. Come get this. He could have shuffled. He could have showboated. He could have bolo punched. Right, the point is bring the fans in. Let them understand that your opponent can't match you in foot speed. Your opponent needs you to be right in front of him to touch you. What does Ariola do? He shrugs, he goes over to the corner. Literally to where Bermain Stavern wants him to be. What he could have done was he could have walked over halfway and then fainted like he was going to come inside. Right? Take a breather. Be too far away from Bermain Stavern for Stavern to hit him. He could have just fainted, fainted. Backed away a little bit, fainted, fainted, rested. He was winning the round already. Right? If Stavern wanted to win the round, Stavern had to come get it. Instead, Ariola keeps walking into Stavern traps. Ariola keeps walking into Stavern's jabbing range. Ariola keeps hanging around Stavern even in the last 15 seconds of rounds that Ariola has already won. Leading to endings of rounds like the end of round one. So Ariola is going to have to look at the film. He's going to have to figure out how to fight on his back foot. He's going to have to figure out how to deal with guys who he has the foot speed advantage on. He's going to have to work on lateral movement. He doesn't have a lot of lateral movement. Right? Lateral movement guys would be able to come in and literally move to the side. Let me make one other point. Stavern's jab hand is hanging at times in this fight. Why not smother it? 
you have the foot speed advantage. Isn't that an opportunity to jump over on this side of Bermain Stavern, right? Stavern's not afraid of stair, folks. He's not that adept in terms of movement. So if he's dangling his hand, can't you smother the hand? Can't you close the distance between on this side of Stavern's body? Between you and Stavern, so Stavern can't even raise that hand to jab you with it. In fact, can't you, if his hand's really low, smother this jab and force him to lift it? Then go to his body and do all kind of stuff over here. Instead, Ariola stands there while remains to burn for stretches of this fight, has his jab hand dangling. Think about it. By staying outside, during those moments, by by not coming in smartly, why come in the front door? Don't you want to come in the side door when you can smother it? By by not coming in the side door, Ariola allows Stavern to hit him with that low jab to the point where. It bothers Ariola so much that he's worried about the jab when he gets hit with the right hand that knocks him down for the first time in the fight in the sixth round. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me say this. If you're thinking of Remains to Vern, he's very technical right now. Right? A fighter fighting him is going to have to figure out how to keep him busy with the jab and how to keep him, you know, needing to catch up with you foot speed wise. Right? You cannot hunt down Bermain's to firm. If you're trying to bum rush him when he's up along the ropes, you're fighting his game. Right? Look at where Stavern is. When he lands the punch that knocks down Chris Ariola, he's by the ropes. He's exactly where he wants to be. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.